this advanced conduction lecture series so this is the lecture 13 and in the previous lecture not in the previous lecture only but through the previous three lectures we were solving a problem of i think unsteady state heat conduction in one dimension through a slab right so today we will take up another problem so i have a question paper here so from this question paper only i will take up some problem so this is a question of of mtech exam in iit kharagpur okay so i will take one question here so just um, excuse me i just want to take these off this year pods these are of no use during record okay so sorry today we will take another problem so let me first put the lecture number so this is lecture 13 right okay so here what does the problem say okay so it is saying consider a, a 2d square region l cross l that should uh, represent a cross section of a very long square bar okay so we have to consider a square cross section here so this is l cross l so every side is having the length l and this is the cross section of a very long square bar okay so you should be very judiciously seeing towards all the words of each and every sentences okay so in this problem these words this very long okay this word or this phrase is having a very great significance okay so now it is saying that three sides of the square cross section bar is at temperature t1 so it is talking about the boundary conditions so three sides any three sides are having the temperatures at t1 and one side is at t2 okay and here it is saying that t2 is greater than t1 now it is saying that formulate the steady state governing equation so we have to formulate the steady state governing equation and so uh, it is saying that it is steady state okay steady state but now you notice that the problem has become two dimensional so this case we have not explored yet right so this has become two dimensional so the previous case was one dimensional unsteady state and it is two dimensional steady state okay obviously without any heat generation clear okay so basically you have to find the two dimensional temperature distribution clear so if it is clear now let me go through the solution okay So firstly, now at this point of juncture, you are already knowing that what is the first step. So can you guess that? Yes, the, the first step is to write the governing equation. Okay, so the first step is to write the governing equation and you should now pause the video and you just write the governing equation. Okay, so you write the governing equation first the equation is what we know that del square t del x square plus del square t del y square plus del square t del z square right k into this is equal to rho cp 
del t del t okay if i don't have any heat generation right so if i don't have any heat generation then this is the governing equation so now i know that this is steady state and also i know now here the very long bar cross section this word will come into play okay so this very long means if i now first uh, choose my coordinate system so actually this should be your i mean uh, first step okay i apologize this should be your first step so in the first step you have to choose a coordinate axis so what i will do is i will cut this and maybe i will paste it in the second page okay so i will draw again this one so now uh, okay guys just give me one second ek plus to chap nahi to kono chap nahi to kono etar jonno chap nahi to kono etar jonno okay okay so now see this is at t1 this is also at t1 this is at t1 and this is at t2 right so there is no symmetry i mean you cannot put uh, any symmetry here so again this is up to you that where you will choose the coordinate system to be but the ultimate aim is to simplify the governing equation simplify the boundary conditions and thus the problem calculations okay so i think it does not matter i mean you take your coordinate system wherever do you want okay so i will take it here so let me choose some other color mm, maybe i will choose now this one okay so my x axis is this okay this is my x and this is my y clear i have also z okay this is my z now what is this z so i can expand this i mean this is actually a three dimensional bar okay so this bar is something like this it is it is extended in z direction also not like this but in both the directions maybe okay in both the directions so like this this okay and here also and from here also okay so this is like this i mean if i join it like this then this is another another cross section of the bar okay so i know that these two are not uh, looking like similar cross section so but this this is see this is the same cross section and this is also the same cross section and this is the whole three dimensional bar okay now it is saying that it is very long that means my z dimension is much much greater than so z dimension is much much greater than x dimension and y dimension okay therefore you see here it is like by intuition by just intuition here it is like what del t by del z into del z right so dimensionally dimensionally this is the form of this expression that that means you are having or you are dividing this variation of temperature by the z coordinate now this z coordinate is very large so we can neglect the variation in z direction so we can neglect the variation of temperature in z direction 
So, these are the I mean judgments that you have to make ok. Now, obviously by just looking at the problem ok. Now, you are you can say I mean uh, you can say that I I am I have I mean in the question paper only I am asked that find the steady state 2D temperature distribution. But suppose you are in industry ok, you are in industry there no one will uh, tell you that yes you have to find only the 2D temperature distribution. There you have to define that if the bar is long or not because in the industry there is nothing called very long bar. There you have to decide as an engineer that if the bar is long or not that is if I can neglect the z dimension or, or I cannot ok. So, how can you do that? So, there is something called a bio number ok. So, I will uh, come to the concept of bio number when I will be talking about the fins when I will be talking about the I mean lounge parameter analysis ok. So, in in fins also you do it like a 1D temperature distribution ok. There also you neglect the uh, temperature distribution in the uh, transverse length ok. So, these things are the main crux of engineering ok. I mean actually as an engineer you are supposed to just write the governing equation, you are supposed to just simplify the governing equation. Now, solving that governing equation any software can do that ok. Obviously, we are learning the separation of variable and all, but practically nowadays no one cares that if you can solve this governing equation from the scratch and, and you can get the end result or not. Can you get the governing equation that is mostly important in the practical engineering. Can you simplify the governing equation to the mathematician or to the uh, machine? Can you do something that we do not have to go for any uh, numerical solution and, and we have to get a very expensive high performance computer? Can you do something that, that so that we can um, I mean avert that and we can get some analytical solution. So, that is the power of an engineer you have to simplify the things ok. So, here I think you are clear that we will be neglecting this one ok. Therefore, the governing equation now boils down to what? Sorry, delta t delta x square plus delta t delta y square is equal to 0. Now, in two dimensional uh, coordinate system this is the Laplace equation right. So, this is the 2D Laplace equation ok equation. Now, this equation we will solve by separation of variable, but uh, before that let us write the boundary conditions ok. So, boundary conditions. So, in this problem we have nothing called an uh, initial condition ok. So, maybe I will uh, remove these lines because these are not uh, required ok. So, according to my coordinate system this is the origin and what is the equation of this phase. So, this phase is y equal to 0 right ok. This phase is what x equal to L right. This phase is y equal to L and this phase is x equal to 0 clear. So, see I have only for this phase I have only for this phase t equal to t 2 ok. So, then my boundary conditions will be t ok t x 0 L 
obviously equality or uh, let us not give the uh, equality sign i will tell that why i am not giving that and for y equal to 0 this is t2 are you clear uh, with this this is y equal to 0 this is y equal to 0 this one and the x limit is from 0 to l okay so basically this point is l comma 0 this point is 0 comma 0 this point is i mean this point is uh, 0 comma l and this point is l comma l clear okay so next boundary condition we will be having t okay 0 this one at y equal to l this is t1 this is uh, which face this is this face okay now let us write the vertical faces we will be having this now x equal to 0 and the y limit is this one we will be having t1 okay next at x equal to l and the y limit is t1 okay so now you see i have the governing equation as an homogeneous equation so this is a homogeneous equation right but all these equation are non homogeneous non homogeneous right so if that is the case then how can we apply separation of variable with so much non homogeneous things so one option is to apply the method of separation of variable now here you have four non homogeneous equations right you have four non homogeneous equation but what i have told uh, remember that i need only one non homogeneous equation so one option is i am writing here that is the option one break the problem into break the problem into how many sub problems i am keeping it up uh, filling the blanks okay so break the problem into some number of sub problems and solve them separately separately and apply method of superposition okay how can you break the problem so for one problem you will take this boundary condition as intact but all these are zero all these are having rh is zero in the second problem maybe you will take this as intact and all these are zero in the third problem maybe this is intact and all these are zero in the fourth problem this is intact and all these are zero okay by this you have to break now uh, have you already filled this blank so if you have if you haven't i urge you to rethink and just go into my previous lecture okay i will not give you this answer in this lecture okay so that will help in your concept building okay so now now i have told you the option one then the question will come that what is the second option okay now before going to that let me share you some honest opinion about these subjects 
from my side see this these things are very beautiful i i i like these things these mathematics and physics but the real world engineering is not uh, limited to only this and i should uh, better say that things have advanced so much that everything has been incorporated uh, together that is if you are only a mechanical engineer then maybe your demand will not end but a, but a person who knows ai ml and who knows mechanical engineer maybe a person who has the, the specialization both in electrical and mechanical engineering i mean the same level of specialization okay so you have to think it like this way that uh, previously scientists they were not only mechanical engineer they were not only mathematician they are, they were not only philosopher they were not only biologist they had specialization in so many fields so i will take the example of a very uh, popular fluid dynamicist and and he is von karman so von karman has many things in fluid dynamics has many works but he has also a very popular theory in solid mechanics so we think that i am just a th uh, thermal engineer thermal and fluids engineer but in the industry a pump cannot work if the mechanical uh, if the if the solid mechanics is not good okay if the strength of the pump is not perfect if the design of the pump is not perfect okay so when you are doing your analysis that if you have to design a an engine maybe so you are given that this much power i have to generate okay then you just tell that okay this is my this should be my engine size now there will be some size sign sorry the, uh, there will be some size uh, restriction now you will be saying okay so in this much size i have to create this much of temperature and then only i will i can create th uh, this much of thrust so engines are basically the breton cycle okay gas turbine engines so you will say that okay my peak temperature uh, will be 7000 degrees celsius then i will get this this much amount of thrust easily if you say this then you will be sacked because you are supposed to be knowing that are there any materials who can sustain or who can bear 7000 degrees celsius so you have to uh, make your thinking such that you have to consider all the things you, you are engineer you are not a thermal physicist okay you have to consider the strength factor you have you have to consider the i mean uh, material science and all okay similar to that ai ml has also um, i mean intruded in all the parts not only mechanical engineering but of all the parts in our life okay so that is why uh, learning these things are very much uh, i mean uh, essential because you will not apply ai or uh, you will not apply cfd for a problem which can be solved analytically easily then again you will be sacked okay so everywhere there is a uh, risk so you cannot skip anything you have to learn this basics also these are not basics these are advanced i i agree so you have to learn this mathematical background also as well as you you also have to appreciate the involvement of the modern technologies and the inter and the interdisciplinary approaches regarding the uh, engineering okay okay so the gist of this 5 minutes shit was that don't restrict yourself in a narrow domain don't think that i only have to know thermodynamics no you you have to know other things also okay maybe you are not a specialized person in material science but at least you have to know that what is ferrite what is austenite what is martensite okay at least you have to know 
that these are iron carbon alloys and martensite is the hardest among all okay these are the basics okay so sorry for the i mean uh, interruption in the flow but these these are also very essential now the option 2 is option 2 is what we will explore now actually okay so let us non dimensionalize the problem so now you will see the real power of the non dimensionalization okay okay so how we will non dimensionalize so x bar i will choose as x by l okay why x by l then if you choose x bar as x by l then for all these these limits all these limits this x from 0 to l now x bar will be from 0 to 1 so this is a very good looking boundary condition okay similarly for y also it will be y by l clear now i will define theta so how i will define theta let us see so firstly i am taking here some t reference i don't know that what this t uh, t reference should be okay so but now here uh, there will be t but one thing i can do if i put here now be very focused okay if i put here t1 then see if i put here t1 then this these boundary conditions will boil down to theta equal to t1 minus t1 by some t reference that is zero so if i define my theta by t minus t1 by t ref then all these equations will become homogeneous here then we can apply the uh, separation of variable okay so i think here you are supposed to non dimensionalize yes in the question also it has been stated that is formulate the steady state governing equation and boundary condition in non dimensional form but see this has not stated that what should be my x reference and y reference and t reference that you have to choose and you have to choose such that what such that you can simplify the problem in the most amount that is possible okay okay so i don't know this t reference so le uh, let us just write the governing equation in non dimensionalized form okay so what will be that that will be see i am just now first writing the dimensional governing equation then i will convert that this is equal to 0 right so i told you if i have to convert this so con to so to convert t into theta what i have to do i have to multiply with this t ref so so multiply that thing multiply with that thing which is at the denominator of this definition okay so then this will be del 2 okay del 2 theta now it is del x del x square so to convert from x to x bar i have to multiply by l because here i have l in denominator okay so these are some short tricks you can always go uh, with the i mean traditional method okay so here i have 2 x bar x bar into x bar so that that is why i will be here so i will be just showing you for the last time that what is the traditional method so you see from this equation my t is theta t ref plus t1 so i can write del t del x 
is equal to t ref is a constant so del theta del x plus 0 because t1 is also a constant again if i do a second derivative if i do a second derivative then t ref just one minute a plus to the aste parish sorry for that actually i am in my iit room so i have to also take care of the fact that because of the aste parish okay so because of my uh, teaching my roommate is not getting any uh, problem so i have to also take care of that fact so that is why these interruptions are happening okay i'm sorry for that now similarly you see that x is equal to x bar into l that means this del x or dx is del x bar into l okay so del x2 is equal to this into l square okay so this is the additional method clear i am just uh, removing all these things because un these are unnecessary okay so similarly what will be this this will be also del 2 theta by del y bar square into the same thing clear okay so now this will be that means the governing uh, equation becomes del 2 theta by del x bar square plus del 2 theta plus del y bar square is equal to 0 okay just note that up till now i have not defined this t ref yet so this is one non dimensionalized governing equation so non dimensionalized governing equation clear now uh, uh, let us come to the boundary conditions so let us come to the non dimensionalized boundary conditions okay so here so let us see the first boundary condition okay so what i will do is i will copy these things and i will paste it here okay so for this boundary condition what will be the non dimensional part that will be theta okay at 0 x bar from 0 to 1 that I have told for y bar equal to 0 is equal to what t2 minus t1 by what by t ref ok. Now for these ones theta 0 x bar 1 y bar equal to now 1 this is equal to 0 so is this one that is now here it will be x bar equal to 0 and y bar from 0 to 1 that is equal to 0 and for x bar equal to 1 y bar 0 to 1 that is equal to 0 ok now see i i have not put any restriction about this t ref here but i can choose this t ref as any constant i can choose 100 i can choose 1 lakh any constant I, I can choose 0.1 i can choose 10 to the power minus 6 anything see if i choose t ref t ref equal to t2 minus t1 then this becomes 1 okay please focus on these uh, philosophies that is why i am taking t ref equal to t2 minus t1 if i take t2 minus t1 as my t ref then this is 1 okay so now taking 
T ref equals to T two minus T one. Okay. My first governing equation that is this x bar zero to one. y bar equal to zero. This is one. Okay. Along with that, I am having these three boundary conditions. So these are my four boundary conditions. Okay. All these are zero. Okay. And I have the governing equation with this. Okay. Okay. So now can we solve? So let us try. Okay. So now method of separation of variable. Okay, I am writing in short S O V. So the uh, first step is, so I will be expecting you guys to try by yourself first. So theta is equal to what? Maybe a function a that is a sole function of x into a function b that is a sole function of y bar. So just put this equation here. Okay. So if you put this equation here, then what this will become? So this will become d two a d x bar whole square into b plus d two b d y bar two into a is equal to zero. Clear? So then I can do this one. Is equal to minus one by b d two b d y bar square. So again, this is a function of x bar only. Okay, function of x bar only. This is a function of y bar only. Right? Then only one option is there. That is. Both must be constant. I say this as my separation constant mu s. Already we know that this should be minus lambda square. Now, why this should be minus lambda square? So I told you a logic that was pertinent for the previous problem. But for this problem, what should be the logic? Okay. So we will see that subsequently. Okay. So from here, we will get the first equation as um, as d two a d x bar two plus lambda square a is equal to zero. The second equation as d two b d y bar two plus okay. Now this will be Minus lambda square b is equal to zero. Okay, so again this equation is having a solution as maybe c one sine lambda x bar plus c two cos lambda x bar. So if you have already seen my previous three videos, I think you can easily understand this. That how does it come? Now for this, what can we do? So here, again, my auxiliary equation is this. This is my auxiliary equation.
okay. So, d equals to plus minus lambda clear. So, if d equal to d is equal to plus minus lambda then my v is equal to some now I will take the constant k1 k1 e to the power lambda into y bar plus k2 into e to the power lambda minus lambda into y bar. So, these things are the basics of the differential equation ok. Ok, so now this is my b sorry. So, now I am supposed to get all these four constants and also this lambda right. So, let us see how can we get that. So, firstly what are the boundary conditions for b? So, b is the function that is only dependent on y bar. So, then I have to take the boundary conditions that are varying in sorry that are specifying only this y bar. So, let us see this boundary condition is specified at a particular y bar ok. It is valid for all x and also this boundary condition is specified at a particular y bar this is also valid for any x that is why these are the boundary conditions that I will uh, select for b. So, again just uh, let me copy all these boundary conditions ok. I do not uh, require all the boundary conditions I just require is b ok. So, this one and now instead of theta I will write b here ok. So, the moment I write b here then there is no meaning in, in writing x because b is not a function of x. So, I can just write b of y bar equal to 0 is equal to 1, b of y bar equal to 1 is equal to 0. So, just put this boundary conditions here. So, if I put this one then I will get 1 equal to k1 plus k2 and if I put the second one then I will get 0 equal to what k1 e to the power lambda plus k2 e to the power minus lambda clear ok. ok clear. So, why I was uh, looking on the question see in the question uh, it was said that split it onto two ODs using separation of variables technique. So, I am not doing this one that is you are asked to split the uh, problems into two ODs. Uh, no, 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 sorry, I am doing the, I am, I am doing that thing only, sorry, sorry, I was just thinking about the method of superposition. So, you just read the problem, I think you can see the problem in the screen. So, we have already done this first part of A, that is the formula, the steady state governing equation and boundary conditions in non-dimensional form. Then we have also split it into two ODEs using separation of variable techniques. So, what are the two ODEs? This one and this one ok. So, we are already done with the first part ok. Ok. So, now you see you have this k1, you have two equations for k1 and k2 clear. So, you can find k1 and k2. So, let us find that. So, here what I can do is k1 e to the power lambda is equals to minus k2 e to the power minus lambda right. So, k1 by k2 is minus e to the power minus 2 lambda right and my k1 plus k2 is equals to 1. 
so my k1 is equals to k2 so minus k2 into e to the power minus 2 lambda clear so now you put this equation into this one so then what you will get uh, we will get here uh, if I put minus k2 into e to the power minus 2 lambda plus k2 is equal to 1 ok so you are getting k2 into 1 minus e to the power minus 2 lambda is equal to 1 so k2 is 1 by this ok so you are uh, able to find k1 and k2 in terms of lambda here clear in in terms of lambda so now let us see for this a so for this a what are the boundary conditions so now clearly this these will be the boundary conditions for a so i'll copy this and i will paste this here okay so similarly there is no meaning of of uh, writing this y okay so this will suffice for and obviously i have to write their a in place of theta correct so then i have to put this one so if i put x x bar equal to 0 so then 0 is equal to c2 0 is equal to c2 so then c2 is equal to 0 that i am getting so that that implies my a is equal to a is equal to what my c1 sin lambda x bar now you you put the second boundary condition that is 0 is equal to c1 sin lambda that is x bar equal to 1 again this is the same eigenvalue condition so this is the this is called the eigen condition right now we know this so here for the non trivial problem so for non trivial problem okay this lambda should be sorry for the non trivial not the problem i should write solution so now i think you guys are clear that why i am writing these sentences or these phrases i have explained very clearly in the previous video okay so this is what sin lambda should be 0 ok that means my lambda n is n pi and why not plus minus n pi that also I have explained in my earlier video. So now one question is remaining that is why in this in this uh, problem my mu s that is the separation constant sorry uh, where is the mu s I have lost the mu s. Uh, where was the mu s ok here why this separation constant here cannot be negative ok I mean cannot be positive so that is a very pertinent question here ok now my suggestion is that you put here everywhere mu s ok then solve the problem you put here everywhere mu s and then solve the uh, problem so then this will be here minus mu s ok if this is here minus mu s then you will be not getting this eigen condition here ok so one more thing see in the previous problem the equation was what in the previous problem i was having in the both side plus sign 
okay again my phone's battery is almost dying out oh my god so in the previous problem i was having in the both side this this plus sign but here i have in one side minus in another side plus i could have taken this side minus also okay now here you have two choices one choice is that is i have taken that is if that is if you take this is equal to minus of this is a, is equal to minus lambda square then you get this two equation but had you taken had you taken this as okay so le, uh, let me write it with any other color maybe red or this one um, okay this one as plus lambda square so then these signs will get changed okay but now the signs will get changed now but now if this sign will get changed now this will be not the solution then okay then i mean if this is minus then the solution uh, will be what now we know that the solution will be some c1 e to the power lambda plus some c2 e to the power minus lambda and i mean all the things would be exchanged so this will be the solution of b and this will be the solution of a had i taken this as my plus lambda square now you see if this is my solution for a and i put the same boundary conditions now boundary conditions i cannot change that is i cannot say that i have changed the sign then the boundary conditions will also get changed no for b this will be the boundary conditions only and for a this will be the boundary conditions only so i cannot change the boundary conditions so but now if you put these here then you cannot get any solution so i mean then you cannot get any uh, any eigen condition okay then you cannot solve the problem similarly if now if now you have the solution of b in this format okay so i would use the laser pens otherwise everything is getting very dirty so if this was the solution of b and you put the same boundary condition in these solutions then also you can see i cannot arrive at the bound i mean eigen condition okay so you have to ensure that you put so this line is very important so i will write it in sentences so ensure the sign of mu s that is either plus lambda square or minus lambda square such that you get you get this equation okay sorry lambda square a equal to 0 with all homogeneous boundary condition or with the homogeneous boundary conditions only okay that is you should i mean you should ensure that if you are getting this equation then the boundary condition for the dependent variable is homogeneous okay that is what i have ensured in this problem that is here this is my equation and see i have both the boundary conditions homogeneous but for b i don't have both the boundary condition homogeneous okay for b i don't have both the boundary conditions homogeneous that is why i have taken very judiciously this as minus lambda square so that 
I can get the uh, equation for A as this and why this? Because I have homogeneous condition, homogeneous boundary conditions for A. So had I, had I had homogeneous boundary conditions for B, I mean all the boundary conditions for B are homogeneous, then I should have taken here this plus lambda square. I think this is clear. I am just uh, uh, repeating this again for just one more time. You have to ensure that if this is, I mean, you have to choose this sign of lambda square in such a way that you get this form of equation for that for the dependent variable which has only homogeneous boundary condition. Okay. You have to ensure the sign of lambda square in such a way that you get this form of governing equation for the dependent variable which has only homogeneous boundary condition. I hope this is clear. So I will I will just modify this statement also such that you get the below form below form of governing equation for the dependent variable dependent variable such that for the dependent variable sorry which has only homogeneous boundary conditions okay and and what do I mean by this below form this below form is this one something plus lambda square something is equal to 0 now this x bar can be anything so I should uh, mean this as also okay now this can change these things can change for this problem here I have a and here I have x1 okay clear so these parts are very uh, critical now these are having obviously the legal I mean not legal the, the authentic mathematical proof but as I have told you you just go for that explanation that is enough for you to understand that what is happening and why I am doing this okay so that you do not have to mug up anything now so just uh, let me solve it quickly already almost one hour have passed and I do not have much time now you see I have the eigen conditions okay so then I know my a n is some c n into sine of n pi into x bar right ok. Now what I have in my b n so actually uh, what we do here is see one option is as I have lambda n here okay as I have uh, lambda n here you just put this lambda n uh, here in this k1 and k2 then you can get this k1 and k2 as k2n so here it will be k2n is equal to 1 by 1 minus e to the power minus 2 lambda n clear so maybe I will write it again so k2n is equal to 1 by 1 minus e to the power minus 2 lambda n ok but what we actually do is the previous thing that I have showed you already so what we do so this part you put it aside and we will take a second approach ok so I will just copy these equations and do it again ok 
and I will suggest you also take the, this approach. But I want to get you acquainted with all the approaches, okay. Now apply this boundary condition only, then I will have my k1, okay, k1 e to the power lambda plus k2 e to the power minus lambda is equal to 0, okay. Then what I am having? I am having my k1 is equal to minus k2 e to the power minus 2 lambda. Then my b becomes what? b becomes if I put this k1 that I have obtained then it will be minus k2 e to the power minus 2 lambda plus okay into that is 1 into lambda y bar plus k2 e to the power minus lambda y bar. My phone has just 10% battery left, I have to make it fast. So then it will be some k2 that I can take common, okay, maybe, okay, let it be e to the power minus 2 lambda and e to the power this one, okay, fine. And actually this will also be kn because this lambdas are lambda n now, okay. So I have my kn, I have my bn, okay. So my theta uh, will be actually summation of a n into b n, okay. Now I have a boundary condition that is my theta, this one that is the only inhomogeneous boundary condition. So are you getting this that to find the ultimate constant, the, the final step is to use the inhomogeneous boundary condition, okay. So that is what theta x bar from 0 to 1, y bar equal to 0 is 1, right. So if I put that here, so then summation n equal to 1 to infinity. So what is my an? An is cn sin lambda n pi, right, I'm sorry, n pi x bar into, I am having kn into this whole thing. So, e to the power minus lambda n y bar minus of e to the power. So, I am just uh, clubbing this two, okay. So, lambda n into y bar minus 2, clear. So, this is, okay. So, this is my theta n actually, this is my theta actually, okay. So, if I put here my theta at y bar equal to 0, okay, so that is what I will put here this as 0 and this as 0, right. So this y bar as 0 and this y bar as 0 and this is equal to 1, right. Now almost the problem is completed, this is Cn sin n lambda n pi x bar into k n okay now this term this term will be 1 right but this term will be not 1 do not do these silly mistakes okay so this is minus e to the power lambda n into minus 2 so this is minus 2 lambda n okay uh -huh. Okay, so I think the video has been stopped for some glitch issue, so, but the blackboard is uh, running, so let us go for that. Okay, so this lambda n, now I should write this one, n pi, okay, 
and I can now finally write this Cn into Kn in as some constants maybe some Sn into sin n pi x bar okay into minus of minus 2 n lambda here is equal to 1. Now you already know that what you have to do you have to apply the orthogonal boundary condition. Now here this is very hard to integrate this right. So this Sn uh, will be out and what we will be getting is sin n pi x okay into sin m pi x sorry I mean this is the step uh, before the summation okay so I should just cover that m pi x dx obviously bar is equal to sin m pi x bar dx bar 0 to 1 0 to 1 clear now I have already described that how it becomes sin square m pi x dx bar ok so we were having uh, one more term that is this term into e to the power minus minus uh, e to the power uh, 2n lambda ok. But anyway this will be a uh, constant so here I will be having with Sn minus e to the power minus 2n lambda ok. So this will be equal to my sin m pi x dx. So the moment you write here sin square m pi x that means you have already considered n equal to m. So I have to change this as sm. So you write either sm or sn it it does not matter because the moment you have jumped into this step that means you have already told that m is equal to n and how it is this I have explained very clearly in my previous video. So this is sm is equal to integral sin m pi x bar dx from 0 to 1 by minus e to the power 2 n pi sin square this one ok. So this was the final solution because as you get sm as you get sm then you can get theta m or theta n ok and now uh, if you are uh, getting this theta n then theta is equal to summation of theta n ok and nothing more than that clear because you see this is theta this is nothing but theta and my s n is equal to this c n into k n. So if you are getting s n then you are getting this whole thing theta n ok. Now my request is that I have done all these calculations very quickly ok. So the logics are totally um, correct but I urge you to go through the calculations once again. I think the calculations are also correct but still if you find anything that is not correct please write that in the comment box and I will reiterate that in the next video ok. And before just closing the video, uh, let me just check once the calculation also. Uh, K1, K2. So, so have you noticed the second approach? In the second approach for this equation for B, I have used only this boundary condition that is the homogeneous one. So in, in separation of variable you keep the inhomogeneous boundary condition for the last to find this final constant. This is the main uh, principle of the separation of variable not the main principle but you have to do it. So we keep the inhomogeneous boundary condition for the last to find the last constant that is remaining ok. So 
this is the process that I want you to follow. Okay. So I think this is correct. Okay. Otherwise, that was also mathematically correct. Okay. So this uh, this approach, this first approach. But in in most of the books, also most of the teachers follow the the second approach. So that is why I want you to follow the second approach. Okay. So here I will end the video and in the next lecture I will solve just one more problem with the separation of variable.